I'm Lucas Ballard. I'm a software engineer at Google, and I work on Google Safe Browsing. I'd like to provide more information for site owners who are notified that their site was infected with malware, specifically with the type SQL injection. You can see sample infected URLs and the type of malware infection when you verify ownership of your site in Google Webmaster Tools. Google Webmaster Tools can be found at google.com slash webmasters. With regard to the malware type SQL injection, this means that your site's database is likely compromised. For example, the hacker may have programmatically inserted malicious code into every record of the database table. Later, when the server loads a page that requires information from the database, the malicious code is now embedded in the page's content. To make this more concrete, let's say you have a blog about boating. Each blog post is stored as a record in a database. Through a SQL injection, your database could be compromised and records modified to include an iframe with content from the attack site. Now, when a user visits a page on your blog, the post that loads in their browser doesn't just contain your musings about boating, but also contains code to make them the next victim of malware. To investigate the results of a SQL injection, if you verified ownership of your site in Webmaster Tools, confirm the issue by copying the sample URLs shown in the malware section. Don't open these URLs in a browser. Instead, use wget or curl to check for unwanted code. Your server will need to be online to use these tools. Next, try to correlate the damage seen in the URL source code through wget or curl with the actual database record. One way to get an estimate of how many records were affected is to look for strings of the hacker's code. For example, if you noticed your pages include a dangerous iframe, you could perform a query searching for iframe code. There are also tools like PHP MyAdmin that provide more visibility to your database entries. Check database log and error files for unusual activity, such as unexpected SQL commands that seem abnormal for regular users or errors. This can provide more information about the hacker's intent. When you're ready to clean your site of the SQL injection, which is in a following step of our hacked site recovery process, you can either update each database record or you can restore your last known database backup. This, of course, doesn't actually correct the original vulnerability that allowed the hacker to compromise your site in the first place. We'll talk more about database security in a following step. I hope this video provides background on SQL injections and how they can be used to distribute malware on an innocent site. Before you move to the next step, be sure to review file system damage assessment to better investigate your entire site rather than just a single type of infection. Thanks for watching.